Cruz and myself were out on scene on August 17th and days before that as well, working on the fire for as long as we could. We had heavy equipment and crews working to try to build containment, uh, but every day we were being challenged by steep slopes and aggressive fire behavior in the afternoons. My name is Mikhail Elsay and I'm the South Branch Director on the McDougal Creek Wildfire. On Thursday, August 17th, we had a cold front passage pass over the fire, which led to extreme fire behavior, challenged the crews and forced us to evacuate off the fire. The cold front passage caused uh, blow-up conditions on the fire and crews were forced to tactically evacuate off the hill down to the lower Bear Creek Forest Service Road. At that time, we tried to re-engage the fire in the neighborhoods uh, in the valley bottom. Crews attempted to get in with heavy machinery, but were quickly challenged by aggressive fire behavior um, in the neighborhoods um, almost immediately upon getting into the neighborhoods. Yeah, my name is Jason Broland. I'm the fire chief uh, here at West Kelowna Fire Rescue. We, we had had about 24 hours or so to prepare for that happening, but we knew that all the conditions were going to align and, and pre present a very challenging situation for us with the fire burning behind our community. It overwhelming when the fire came to town. We knew we had a couple of areas we could prepare for, which we did, uh, but we didn't know where the fire was going to come down into town. A lot of the focus working with um, BC Wildfire was just to use that time to warn people. Uh, to put them on evacuation alert, to get them ready for what could be a very challenging situation. Um, and as it turned out, the fire you know, came into town in many places and, and was a real challenge for our community. But the warning that we were able to give, give people meant that when the time was needed, it ended up being a, an orderly evacuation. Hi, my name is Larry Watkinson, uh, working with the BC Wildfire Service. I was holding the structure branch for the start of this fire. Thursday night, uh, fire behavior was probably some of the most advanced uh, and developing fire behavior that I've seen in my career. Like rank six crown uh, spotting significantly ahead of the fire front and then coming together. At that time, crews had to again um, pivot tactics and started tactically evacuating residents that were still uh, in, in the area working with the RCMP. It was a long night. It was the longest night of my career. We uh, very early on set up a command post with BC Wildfire uh, and we worked hard all night um, and about you know just after two in the morning um, we had multiple crews deployed from fire departments across the region. Uh, our fire department was fully committed. Everything we had uh, was on the fire. Uh, and we knew that we were already losing houses, uh, but we had a strong command structure in place, uh, not only because of the wildfire service, but also because of all the structural fire departments who came, the task force leaders, the uh, division and group supervisors. Um, we had built out the system that we had planned and, and we were fighting the fire. Um, you know, I, I had put command in someone that I trusted and, and I needed to get some sleep because we knew the next day was going to be long. Um, but as I drove home, I thought, you know, I'll just take one pass through this neighborhood to see what's going on. And, you know, I saw what was going on and it was a firefight of epic proportions. And there was no way that I was going to go home and go to bed. So I ended up joining in uh, at that point and, and, you know, asked the people on the ground, where do you need me? And they told me, well, we're, you know, head to this street. There's no one there. Uh, and let's let's get it figured out up in that area. And I, I went to that street and I got there and every house on the street was threatened. There was fire uh, all around us. Uh, it's one of the tactics we use is called fire front following. And it's when we can't keep pace with the movement of the fire front. So apparatus and personnel, it's either unsafe to be in that environment or the fire is developing and moving so quickly we can't physically move as quickly as the fire front is occurring. So. We move to a fire front following tactic, so the fire front passes through the area that we want to protect and then we clean it up after the fire front's gone by. And that was the entire strategy for the night of Thursday. Following the day the fire came um, out of the hills and, and down into, into West Kelowna, uh, the crews have sort of started to integrate with the, uh, our local fire departments, West Kelowna Fire, Kelowna Fire, um, and all our um, agencies that came from all over the province to support this incident. Uh, those, in those moments there, um, we, were, we were working very closely side by side with the fire departments, doing as much structure protection as, as possible, um, 
putting in hose lays and, and working right behind the homes to do our best to um, defend the residents as the fire came out of the hill. So, you know, since the first night when the fire passed through town, um, we immediately started building an army. And, you know, we spent the next day in a very difficult firefight. The next night was difficult. But uh, every minute that went by, more resources were being added, uh, more departments were sending trucks. Um, the wildfire service was adding more and more staff. There was, you know, the command presence was growing um, and we were getting better organized. So we were better able to deal with, with the incident as it evolved. Um, you know, to the point where like on the third day there was almost 500 people on the org chart. And that is a huge machine that's capable of really big things. Um, we have firefighters deployed throughout the community at that point doing what they could to try and stop this fire with like with thousands of people evacuated from their homes our, our priority becomes protecting those homes but also doing what we had to do to mop up and, and make the neighborhood safe and get people back in. It started when I got a phone call from um, Mikhail in the, in the zone. Uh, telling me that there was a fire behind town and and that uh, you know they were working on it and you know so at that point it was him and, and it evolved uh, to being him and me and you know we started notifying people and, and within our organization and we started to do some planning uh, we started to let the EOC know and and you know from right from the early outset um, you know we were working together on that fire as our command structure built out, um, you know, the Mikhail and I were side by side sitting uh, in my fire hall at the coffee table in Unified Command dealing with this incident to the point where today there's 500 people on the org chart and, you know, I'm still um, being given the privilege of working with the incident management team. and and having a seat right at the table alongside the incident commander, having input in decisions that affect my community and being aware of, of everything right down to the, the smallest level of detail as a partner in the process and, and that's the model that works. We've had extraordinary outreach, uh, UBCO, Salvation Army, among n numerous restaurants stepping up and, and just the the support of the people, the honks and the waves and the kids' signs, uh, it's very touching and it's very uh, rewarding for us to see that kind of commitment from our communities and the support. We're out here working really hard to protect their communities and we had a lot of wins on, the, on these fires and sadly a few losses and we want to reflect on that and respect that but we are very proud of our communities and the work that we're doing and the firefighters that have come out to help.